there's a there's a more longer presentation with more information on our website if anyone would like to go um, go and see that themselves. So just taking you through here um, our disclaimer. And I think the first point we start on is is really why a royalty company and a gold royalty company in particular is is a really in our, in our in our view a really good component of anyone's portfolio. And I think that it gives you something different in terms of, of risk profile um, and also exposure. So I think most people are familiar exploration, development, small cap producers, all the way up to the majors, mid and mid and large caps. And you know, going through that cycle, you go from the really high risk, speculative, you know, junior projects, um, you know, that that uh, can be the one to ten thousands, but also rarely happens and comes with a lot of risk. You go through development companies, the timelines, capital associated with that, through to small cap producers. Um, which often have um, you know, lower uh, cost margins with them, um, uh, lower cost profit margins, um, and through to the majors, generally fully valued. Um, and um, I think you know across that spectrum, um, the royalty company and a gold royalty company like Elemental that has producing royalties from the outset, it offers somebody something you know completely different. We're cash flow positive. We have been from day one as a company. Um, we have in the sub billion dollar royalty space this year. We'll have um, the third most revenue after um, you know a nine hundred million dollar and a five hundred million dollar royalty company. And to put that into perspective, we're an eighty million dollar royalty company at the moment. Uh, we've got low overheads. We're as diversified as a mid tier, um, and crucially, we get free expiration upside um, going forwards on on the projects we have royalties on. And I think if you look across, uh, go back ten years, um, and you look across royalty index, you look across the GDX and you look across gold as a commodity, you can see that it has been really beneficial to have a royalty company um, in your portfolio um, because they have outperformed them significantly. And I think that um, if you're looking at the royalty space, you know, one of the things that we offer um, is that we are a really fast growing um, royalty company that has just six months ago in the last six months come to the market and listed. So uh, since we started this company privately in 2017, we've um, increased the share price more than 400%. Um, and looking at us today, we're 92% exposed to gold. Um, we're with the last transaction we just did, um, a really major one, we're 65% weighted towards Australia, so a top tier jurisdiction. Um, management and directors, I think crucially, still have a 16% stake in the company. So really material, we, we do, we make decisions because ultimately that is how we are going to benefit um, taking the share price up. Um, but I think alongside directors and management, um, we'll have on the closing of the last acquisition, um, Deutsche Bauton at 12%, Temper at 4%, um, South 32. So that is a spin out from BHP Billiton, who we just acquired the royalty portfolio from, will be coming in as our largest shareholder of just under 19%, and about 20% held by a few remaining institutions and, um, and uh, private investors. So I think a pretty good capital structure and um, that takes us on to the, you know, the revenue for the company. And for 2020, we haven't announced Q4 yet, but we had forecast 5.2 million US dollars for gross revenue. And um, I think if you look at where that is compared to our peers, that's more than double the sort of peers who are all a higher market cap than us at the moment. So you know, Elemental as it stands today, is the best value you will get in the royalty space with a management team who have taken it from a startup um, through to where it is today. Um, and if you look at our portfolio, and, and Keith mentioned this in his intro, we have our largest and biggest royalty, which is Australia's newest gold mine, which comes on stream in Q2 of this year. So that will be adding about four, four and a half million US dollars gross revenue a year. Um, and then in um, from July 2022, we have Premier Gold's Mercedes royalty that starts paying us, um, and that's an operating mine already. And then our, our big development project, which is also in Australia, um, Laverton, which is forecast as, to restart in 2022. So even if we did nothing else, um, we have an awful lot that is going to be happening in terms of our portfolio and our development over the coming six months, year, 18 months, and then two years ahead. And if we just recap for those who aren't familiar, um, what, what we did in 2020. We, um, in the start of the year, we acquired a, a royalty on Taranga's Wang Yon mine, um, and that's the newest mine that Taranga built. 
and they just announced 2020 production this week. So that was 175,000 ounces. And bear in mind that when this mine was built, it was 130 to 140,000 ounce a year um, design. So in its first year, it's already up to 175,000 ounces, 10 year mine life, just to begin with. And um, we have a 1% royalty over that for the life of the mine. Um, we listed on the TSX fee in July. Uh, we had an oversubscribed $24 million fundraise. It was about a 50-50 institutional retail split. Um, and I think really set us up um, nicely to take the company forwards. We repaid a, a debt facility we had with Sprott um, following that fundraise and listing. Um, and then we initiated coverage we, we got with Canaccord and Hayward. Um, and I think that's really important for us to get start getting the story out there. Um, we announced trading on the OTC QX market in the US as well. And, um, and then the most recent and really the most transformative acquisition we've done for the company to date was in November. And that was um, uh, acquisition of three royalties from South 32 to 55 million US dollars. Um, and that takes us, it, it sort of doubles the size of the company in each respect. But I think what's, what's really important with that is as a royalty company, you tend to have fixed costs. And so if we're taking our royalty revenue and adding another 4 million, 90% of that 4 million is free cash flow because we have no operating costs for each additional royalty we add. And so uh, that is why you can get to the position of doubling your revenue, but actually your free cash flow is going up three or four times. Um, and alongside the announcement of that acquisition, um, we announced a, a $16 million Canadian, again, oversubscribed fundraise um, and a $25 million debt facility, again, um, with, with Sprott Lending. Um, and so that transaction is, is the closing of it. Um, and the announcement is anticipated to be done shortly. And that will be our first, I think, um, sort of catalyst in 2021 when that closes. Um, and then in Q2, as the first gold pour happens at Carla Winder, um, and we start to get paid following Q2. Um, and that's a mine that has a 12 year mine life. It's 120 to 140,000 ounce mine and um, it's Australia's newest mine. And I think that what's really interesting about it is that it's not a brownfields real restart. So most mines in Australia you look at today and um, similar in many regards, I think in Canada are often brownfield developments. This is, a, um, this is really a greenfields um, discovery that's, that's being built um, and you know, Australia's newest largest mine. So I think really looking forward to that coming on. And um, one other thing it's important to point out is that we, we closed a Wan Yong transaction um, at the end of January last year. So we only had 11 months of revenue from that. So if you look at 2021, we will have a, a full year of Wan Yong revenue. We will have um, a bit over half a year of, of Carla Winder revenue. Um, and then in 2022, we'll have full year of Carla Winder revenue and half a year of revenue from the Mercedes royalty. Um, and, um, and then in 2023, we'll have a full year of revenue from Wang Yon, Carla Winder and Mercedes. So you can see that even if we did nothing else for the next two years, um, you know, our revenue is going to be materially growing each year. Um, and, and the opportunity for more acquisitions as we go, we're always looking at more acquisitions. Um, refinancing um, and repaying part of that debt facility as well. And crucially, and lastly, research coverage, expanding it and raising investor awareness. I think for us, as a, um, we've been around now since, since 2017 as a company, but less than six months of that has been as a public company. So I think that um, you know, getting the story out there, making sure people know we exist is, is really important. Just quickly here, this is timeline of the company and um, on the left-hand side, up until mid-2020, uh, the background gold is, is what we did as a private company. Um, so we started at about an equivalent of 28 cents Canadian, um, and we made a number of, of really material transactions. Um, we listed the company mid last year at about 130 Canadian share price. Um, and I think we're currently at about um, a 150 Canadian share price. Um, and then underneath it, you can see the, the market cap of the company as, as we've gone through over time. So just, you know, drawing on that, I think we've raised money every time at a higher price that we have um, uh, as we've taken the company. Um, and also we've been able to really scale out, build out the portfolio to the place it is today, where we have more revenue for the next three years without, without doing anything else. 
And this here is a, a visual representation of that. You can see we started off really a startup in 2017, $400,000 of royalty revenue. And I can tell you when we did it, everyone said, you don't have a hope. You're a small private company. You know, you can't find producing royalties. You certainly can't find precious metals producing royalties. Um, and if you look at us today, you know, without doing anything else, um, we're going to be, um, you know, getting up to 8 million revenue US, this is all US dollars um, for this year, 12 million for 2022 and 14 million for 2023. And I think the, the crucial thing there is if you take our fixed costs and say it's one and a half million a year, um, you can really see how the free cash flow we get from that. Um, it, it grows exponentially over the next couple of years, even if we do nothing else. And um, as you can see, sort of the history of the company is we've been doubling the revenue every year. Um, so we've been growing really fast and we've been able to do it, um, I think, the, the hardest way, which is with producing high quality royalties from the outset. And this is an, this is an overview of the portfolio. You can see really diversified um, by jurisdiction, but also by operator. So all different operators. Um, which I think is really important. And the new acquisition is three royalties in Australia. So a tier one jurisdiction. And I think that, um, that really sets us up well going, going forwards. I'll touch here a, few, a bit on a few of our major royalties. Um, and these are the two biggest we have um, at the moment. So this is, this is Taranga's Wanyon. And um, I think I just point out that uh, Taranga are, are being uh, acquired by Endeavour. Um, at the moment. So that's creating a top 10 gold producer as our counterparty on this royalty. And in its first year of production, which was last year, um, they, they produced 175,000 ounces. Um, so a really material increase on their initial um, 130,000 ounce mine. So this is, this is a major mine. Um, it's got a 10 year mine life to start with, and it's got a thousand square kilometer um, license package. And our royalty covers the entire license package. So if in 10 years time, it's still going and it has a 10 year mine life, that royalty will still be paying us and we never have to invest another dollar in it going forwards. The second royalty, Carl Winder, will be our biggest individual royalty um, once it comes on stream in, in this year. And um, uh, we've had some ongoing construction updates um, uh, we've seen from the operator over the last couple of months. And um, I think we'll get some updates over the coming weeks and months um, as it starts to come into production. And this is going to be a 120 to 140,000 ounce mine with an initial 12 year mine life. Um, it's a really well known management team in Australia. Um, the CEO took his last company from 40 million to over 2 billion. Um, he did a similar um, job with, with the previous company before that. Um, so very well known, well regarded management team in Australia. And, um, and once this royalty comes in, it will be paying us four, four and a half million dollars a year um, in royalty revenue. Um, again, um, for the rest of its life going forward. So it's a, it's a really material royalty for us. Two others that we already have, uh, the Amon Kaya royalty, uh, that's 2.25% um, royalty on a, on a mine that's been operating in Chile for the last couple of years. Um, and we've owned it for about two years now. Um, and that's been a pretty consistent performer for us. Um, and a royalty on Premier Gold's Mercedes in, in Mexico. Um, and that is... Um, it's been, uh, it's been sort of ramping up um, since COVID hit and um, that royalty for us will start paying in mid 2022 onwards. Um, and there's no payments related to that. Um, there's nothing else we have to do. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit like Wang Yong in that it covers a 700 square kilometer license package. And I think, you know, the last one I'll talk about on here is, is the Laverton royalty, which we also bought in Australia. And this is, um, at the moment, it's a historic brownfields asset. Um, it's sort of split into two parts. So the oxides, which is where the focus is for development in the short term, um, and, and then the, um, the refractory underground at, at Lancefield. And so the, the first stage of their production, they'll have a PFS coming out this month, is, is, it, is it, um, uh, on the oxide section. And then the second part is the, um, the refractory underground at Lancefield. And, you know, I think in the short term, the, the oxide is going to be what pays us. But in the longer term, I think the prize is the Lancefield Underground. In the 1990s, that was actually one of the top 10 underground gold mines in Western Australia. And it stopped mining in 1993 and has seen very little work since. So, again, I think it's one that, um, you know, it will be a really valuable royalty 
um, to keep. And as they do more exploration and progress the project, um, it will be worth more for us going forward. Capital structure, and I touched on it earlier, um, we've got about, uh, with the closing of this transaction, um, we'll have 69 million shares outstanding um, and about uh, an 82 million US dollar market cap. So just a bit lower than that, I think, at the current share price. We've got about 5 million in cash and we'll have the $25 million um, debt uh, package with, with Sprott. Um, in terms of the, the shareholding base, I, I touched on it earlier, but again, just 16% directors and management. And I think in the last fundraise, which is about the share price we, we did, um, uh, we, as, a, as directors and management, we probably took about $900,000 of that. And I think in the fundraise, in, in sort of mid-year, um, we took a, a bit over a million dollars of that. Um, from the board and management. So we are all really, really materially invested in this and um, couldn't be more driven to make it work. Um, I would just note that um, the two price targets we have from Hayward Canical, 250 and 275, and, um, and Canical just upped that recently from, from 225 to 275. So I think um, a really good time to invest in, in the company. And um, we, we do like to say, you know, do as we do, not just as we say, um, and, and all the directors and I think um, everyone on the management team has has actually bought shares personally um, in the last six months. Um, so I think that hopefully tells you something about where we believe we're going, um, which is continuing what we've done today, um, growing the company, adding to the revenue, building out the, the royalty base. And I think um, at the current valuation we are, um, we are standout in terms of, um, you know, the sub billion dollar royalty space. Um, we're a standout in terms of value for, for producing royalties. Um, and also just value, um, a sort of net asset value. Um, John Robbins, I'll just mention, probably well known for Canadian markets, but um, uh, set up Discovery Group with, with Jim Pass and our advisory panel. And, um, and we joined the Discovery Group on, on listing the company. So that's been really helpful for us in terms of network connections, um, particularly in the Canadian capital markets. Um, and then Peter and Richard, who were both from X Western Mining, um, and uh, in Australia, 20 and 30 years respectively, and, um, and founded the company with me. So I think a, a really good um, management team, board, um, a mix of experience and, and drive. And you know, if you're looking at it and going, okay, Elementals, it's got this great track record. It's actually put together um, really high quality producing royalties. Um, it's taken it from a standing start all the way through listing the company um, doing a $55 million transformational acquisition with BHP Spinout South 32 um, at the end of last year, you know, and, and why should I, why should I invest in the company now? Um, well, I think you can, you can do it at the moment um, at about the best price we've been at since we listed the company. Um, and that's, that's almost the same price as the South 32 portfolio acquisition was. And um, if you look at um, sort of track record, um, every time we have, we have raised money, um, you can see we've, we've done it at a higher price. And I think that um, uh, with the assets that we have, um, and they are some really high quality assets, um, you know, with multi-billion dollar counterparties, um, we will have royalty revenue going forward for many years. Um, and I think that it, it puts us in a position that none of our peers really are. I think, um, you know, the only peers that will have sort of revenue similar to us um, over the next 12 and 18 months um, are sort of 500 million and 900 million dollar market caps respectively. So I think um, it, it really does, um, you know, highlight the valuation, um, you know, difference. And um, um, if you go on our website and have a look at it there, you'll see um, we've got a few comps tables and um, a bit more detail on, on the valuations, but um, I thought I'd just leave it there.